Hello, Internet. My name's Patrick, and this is Fringeworthy. No, this is Nimbus. This channel is Fringeworthy, and today I'm going to take you back to where this all started. Many people have been asking me over the past years or so to give an update on my Mono Blue Martyr deck tech, and that's exactly what I'm doing here. So without further ado, let's dive into the deck. Now, longtime viewers of the channel may be familiar with how Mono Blue Martyr works as a deck. The main kill condition is a Niv Magus Elemental, where you exile a ton of copies of Flusterstorm to it, which means you're building up a huge stack all at once. To do this, you obviously need a lot of cards in your hand, and so you run Sky Hussar, not for the ability to cast it, but for the ability to forecast it by tapping untapped white or blue creatures you control. What are some of these creatures, you may ask? Well, of course, we have Martyr of Frost, Judge's Familiar, and Mausoleum Wanderer rounding out our package. So the Martyr of Frost is noteworthy because it is the namesake of the deck and can counter any type of spell. Judge's Familiars and Mausoleum Wanderers can only counter instants and sorceries. Mausoleum Wanderer most of the time acts as a Judge's Familiar, but can counter for more than one as attacks instead of Judge's Familiar's static one. That comes about when you're playing more Mausoleum Wanderers or when you have Umazawa's Jite equipped. More on that later. In addition, we're running two Ninja of the Deep Hours as another draw card package, two Spell Stutter Sprites as more flash counter spell things, and Brazen Borrower to deal with pesky permanence and up our Fairy Count for Spell Stutter Sprite. Do note that you are very likely going to be petty thefting things and then letting the Brazen Borrower sit in adventure mode for a while until you finally have three mana to cast it. Three mana is quite a bit in this deck. Speaking of three mana, we've got Scab Ruinator, one of our other finisher cards. This is sort of our backup in case the Niv Magus plan doesn't work. We've got Aether Vial that usually sticks on one to get in all of our one drop creatures in an uncounterable and mana free way. And as mentioned before, two Umezawa's Jite to sort of make use of our small creatures and make better use of Mausoleum Wanderer's ability. Now on to the counter package. We've of course got four Force of Will, we're running two Disrupting Shoal and two Force of Negation. The reason why I haven't switched over to full four Force of Negations is because you can only cast them for free on your opponent's turn. Like I said earlier, three mana is pretty expensive for this deck, and we want to be able to chain out at least five counter spells into, say, a Flusterstorm to be able to pump up the Niv Magus Elemental effectively on our turn, and we can't do that with Force of Negation. So that's why there's only two. It is still a very good card and definitely better than Disrupting Shoal nine times out of ten, but Disrupting Shoal still has its place in the deck. Since we do need free counter spells, we're of course running four dazes. We've got two wastelands here to deal with Cavern of Souls or other lands that are causing us trouble, and two ancestral visions as a last scenario backup for card draw engine. Now the rest of our land base, other than wasteland, is 11 islands. Simple as that. So for the sideboard, we've got four Tormod scripts to fight over graveyard strategies, Pithing Needle, mostly to deal with pesky permanents and particularly planeswalkers, Spell Stutter Sprite, we've got the other two in here. If our opponent's deck is trying to play more tempo, we can try and take that tempo away from them with Spell Stutter Sprites. We've also got a Spare Scab Ruinator if the Niv Magus plan isn't looking too good and the Scab Ruinator plan looks better. Additionally, a Vantress Gargoyle, a new addition to the deck. It's very likely that this will be online very early and is another great way to grind out long games. Lastly, we've got three Back to Basics and two Submerges. Back to Basics is starting to be less good in the sideboard here with the advent of more astrolabe based decks so you may need to cut back on this but i still would recommend having about two uh, submerge is getting better as time goes on as more decks are splashing for veil of summer and oko so maybe up your count here now on to some specific matchups hard combo decks like sneak and show are sort of our best case scenario for the deck they've got a handful of cards in this case show and tell sneak attack cunning wish maybe eureka that you'll need to counter other than that, you can just sort of run wild, set up your combo, and eventually win. For this, we definitely want to take out our Jites and our Scab Ruinator, as well as our Ancestral Vision. These cards don't do too well against uh, all of a sudden I win combo decks. The Scab Ruinator isn't going to trade with anything, the Jite is not going to be able to remove anything, and drawing off Ancestral Vision is going to usually be a bit too slow. 
Instead, we want to bring in our pithing needles to name Sneak Attack, or if they are running Jace the Mind Sculptor or any other sort of Planeswalker, name that. You can also name some fetch lands to slow them down on mana. And Back to Basics is another way to slow them down on mana. Moving on, we've got Snowco Control, or some sort of snow control. In here, we really need to worry about Teferi Time Raveler. Its static ability will prevent us from being able to combo off with Niv Magus Elemental, especially in game one. We do plan on boarding that out for games two and three, just because it's not very strong in this matchup. Oko is additionally annoying because Oko can turn all of our blue creatures that we are using to forecast into non-blue creatures. Sure, they're three threes, but usually they can deal with those. So in this, we definitely want to bring out our Niv Magus Elemental and Flusterstorm plan, as well as one Ancestral Vision, to play more of the fair game. Since they are on green, usually, we'll be bringing in our Submerges. We'll also bring in the Sprites, the Scabruinators, and the Vandress Gargoyles to try to get there for more of a fair plan. You may also want to consider bringing in Pithing Needle here, just to deal with things like Chase the Mind Sculptor or even Oko Thief of Crowns, other Planeswalkers that they may have in their package, but that's going to be on a case-by-case -case basis. Lastly, let's talk about a bad matchup, and that's Mono Red Prison or Moon Stompy or pretty much any sort of deck that's running Chalice of the Void or Trinisphere. Both of these are hugely problematic for us. A Chalice on one, if we don't have a uh, a vial down is going to be a huge problem that we will not be able to play around very easily. It is still possible, but it's definitely not going to be easy. Even worse is Trinisphere. We do have a large variety of CMCs throughout the deck, but Trinisphere making all of our spells that usually cost one or two at most cost three is pretty bad. This deck is light on mana, so mana taxing effects like either of these are a huge problem. Additionally, a lot of Mono Red Prison decks run Chandra Torch of Defiance as their finisher, among other options. Planeswalkers are notoriously hard for this deck to combat. For that reason, we're boarding out our Niv Magus Elemental Plan and our Flusterstorms, as well as one Ancestral Vision, to pull in our Pithing Needles, Spell Stutter Sprites, Scab Ruinators, and Vantress Gargoyle. We do need to play a bit more of a fair matchup against this deck as best we can, but like I said, this is one of our worst matchups that we can come across. Well, that about wraps up this episode of Fringe Worthy. If you liked what you saw, please feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave some comments down below about decks you want to see in the future. I've really streamlined my process for making videos, and because of that, I've got four more on the way later this week. That's right, a video a day for each weekday of this week. No joke. So stick around, see what I've got coming up. I've got some legacy decks. I've got some standard decks that you'll be able to play on Arena this Friday when they do their FNM special, play any cards in standard, whole card pool open up to you. So please check those out uh, and I'll see you later this week. Stay safe, wash your hands. See you next time.